Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, thanks for joining. This video is a little bit different with the gear. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that a few weeks ago I posted a kit that I wore uh, but couldn't use for gameplay because we were at the outdoor rink and we had had some warm weather and no matter what we did, even we waited a couple extra hours, we just couldn't uh, go out and use the ice because the conditions of the ice weren't conducive to skating. So I snuck out there for a little bit and did a couple of poses for the camera and took some snapshots and shared them on Instagram. So fast forward a week later, I really wanted to get the kid out there, but I did make one change. So you saw from the photos, I wore the white primary FET pads, the GP59 XLs the first time around. And then the second time when we actually got to play, I decided to change and go with the 59Ls that are primary red. And honestly, that's because they really do match the gloves way better. I guess we'll talk about both sets of pads right now. First of all, the 59XL, these are 34 inch DuraSoft material pads. And these are from roughly 1987 to 1989. Overall, they're not in the best condition and they're also not really a great candidate for any kind of restoration work. You get a lot of cracking in the polyurethane skin that's on there. And the synthetic backing material for that wasn't the best and didn't hold up as well. I just don't feel like going through the work of trying to color restore them would last very long at all. Uh, and I kind of like the patina on these. Uh, this is what they should look like 30 some years later. So the second set of pads that are actually in the game video that's the primary red GP59L. Those are a 32 inch pad. Again, based on the material and the design of the pad, that makes them somewhere about 87 to 89. They pretty much did away with these um, starting in 1990. Remember, this is the end of the life for the 59 and the 95 style of pad. This is still carrying on from the old leather pads. Very little changes over those years. So I guess from there, let's move to the skates. These are my Langolers. I believe this design of the model is from the 70s and it has the original boot liners and the original woven lace. They weigh like 3.8 pounds each, I believe. The blades are relatively thick steel. They're a tall skate. I've been trying to get used to them, wearing them so I can wear them more often, specifically when I wear leather or this style of synthetic pad. On my head, this is a late 70s manufactured Cooper SK600 helmet and an HM30 cage. And I did refoam this particular one. If it doesn't look familiar for an SK600, that's because the original design of the helmet used a dual density foam cut in shapes like this one has. It did not originally have the uh, bubble type foam that most people are used to seeing on the 600s. All right, on to the gloves. These are amazing gloves in the collection. The blocker I've used before. This is the blocker I even took to Nashville when I did my like Habs setup with the leather red GP95 pads. So I have used that. I've talked about it. It's a GM12, all leather construction. It is the PF finger protected model, which means it has the little pads on the front of the finger area. It does have the original horse hide palm. And on the back side of those fingers, there is like an um, eighth inch, maybe a little thicker shape of the finger uh, sewn into the leather is Rubitex padding, and that was for back of your hand protection. The problem is over decades, the horsehide palm becomes pretty stiff. And on top of that, the foam in those fingers becomes very stiff. So you really have to uh, consciously be making a grip to hold your stick. You, you have to make a fist. It makes it pretty uncomfortable, especially over the course of a game. The palm's in great shape, so I'm gonna continue working on it as far as uh, cleaning it and oiling it and hopefully loosen it up some. 
ultimately I may have to break down and get a new palm, a new leather palm installed by Glenn Miller just to make it so that it is usable. The catch glove or trapper, that's a GM 21 ST. And again, that's a leather glove. That trapper is going to be from roughly 1987 to 1989. Uh, one, because it's a GM 21 ST. And number two reason is because of the cuff design and the older Cooper logo. This is the first time I've been able to use the glove. It's very stiff still. I've been conditioning it for on and off for the course of like the last year. I've uh, put a ball and a puck in the pocket and tied it closed. I've uh, been trying to break it in, but it is still very stiff. So because it's the Olympics right now, that's why I went with this kit. And I went with one of my 1980 style uh, Olympic jerseys. This is just a reproduction. I think it's a K1 jersey. I've used this a few different times, but you know, it all kind of looks cool together. And I wanted to kind of celebrate the Olympics and Team USA, etc., on the outdoor rink. Under the jersey, the Cooper Protect Doll SABP 22 belly and shoulders. So this is the, I've talked about it many times. This is kind of the evolution out of the two piece into a one piece design. It just has the shoulder and arms part attached to the belly pad. The belly pad is still very similar to uh, BP30. In fact, I think it's identical construction to the BP30 down to and including even the metal clip that connects the strap around to the belly. Along with that, for this game, I did decide to go with the KTP uh, neck throat protector bib. And this is a later version with the Kevlar material in it. So this is late 80s. Finishing off all the gear I wear, Tacla pants. These are the Capitals pants, but they're primary blue and they have the red and white stripe and stars on them. And overall, it looked pretty cool with the kit, uh, especially the kind of alternating concept of the primary red on pads and gloves, then the primary blue on the pants and the helmet actually ended up looking pretty neat. And then for both times out on the ice, I took Cooper Superlight GL sticks. So the first day when I wore the white pads and couldn't play, I had the natural with the blue outline on white logo, curved blade. And then for the game we did play, I took the blue with white graphics, straight blade. These are heavy sticks. They're solid. I probably, oh, I did. Let me show you. I knew about the blocker. And the first time I went out, I added some extra layers of tape and um, the twisted tape here for a grip to make it so it was a little thicker for me to hold on to. And I did not do that. And I remembered once we got there, I do have the twisted uh, tape, but I didn't thicken the amount here to make it easier to hold. And I really should have done that given I knew I was wearing that blocker with a stiff palm. Well, there you have it. That's all of the gear for this particular one. Again, this one is uh, outdoor rink. We only had, I think, seven skaters show up. So we did three on three. Um, I did have... Aaron, a local goalie I know, pop out to help out and cover the other net. So that was helpful so I didn't have to go up against a shooter tutor. Game video is coming up. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you got anything to say about any of the gear or the game video, please leave comments down below. I'd love to hear what everybody has to say, what memories the stuff stirs up and so on. And as always, thanks for watching.
That was it.